In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the history of TCP IP. And you can't talk about the history of TCP IP without talking about the history of the internet, or certainly what we call the internet now. Now, back in 1969, the internet was actually a very small network that was developed at the request of the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA, and it was called the ARPANET at that point. So back in 1967, there was some design discussions that were held, and eventually a company called Bolt, Baranek & Newman in Massachusetts was contracted by ARPA to build what was going to be called the ARPANET. So the idea was it was going to be used as a research network to look into the feasibility of using computer networks in order to primarily facilitate defense operations. In 1969, we get the first node, and we can take a look at a diagram here of the first hookup here. So we've got the interface message processor or IMP, which was an early router or the very first router, if you want to call it that. And the first host was a Sigma 7 system. Now, eventually, by December of 1969, we end up with a four node ARPANET. And you can see we've got SRI, Utah, UCLA, and UCSB. So we've got four nodes on the internet. The early network protocols that were used was actually something called NCP. So we have this host software, and early on it wasn't actually TCP IP, it was NCP. ARPANET hosts start using network control protocol, the first host-to-host -host protocol. In 1972, we get the first email, which is kind of interesting. Ray Tomlinson at BBN starts to send email, and that's when the first at sign was used. But in 1974 is where we actually get to where the very first specification for TCP is published. You'll note I only said TCP. I didn't say TCP IP. At that point, there was no internet protocol. TCP was the entire protocol, and TCP took the functions that now the IP portion or the internet protocol portion actually had. Through the 1970s, TCP kept growing, and in 1978, you can see here, TCP was split into TCP and IP. So they determined that for better modularity, they needed a whole different protocol, so they created the Internet Protocol in 1978. At that point, they were still using NCP primarily on the ARPANET. In 1981, actually, you can see RFC 801 here, the NCP-TCP transition plan. So there was actually a plan to transition between NCP, or the network control protocol, and TCP, which is the transmission control protocol, or TCP-IP. It wasn't until the early 80s that TCP-IP became the predominant networking protocol on what was then still a fledgling internet. It was still called the ARPANET. And in the early 80s, there were several networks that were being created. In 1981, for example, there was BitNet, and that was a network primarily of IBM mainframes. There was the Computer Science Network, and there were several other networks that were being created around the world. Now, eventually by the mid-80s, TCP IP was the predominant and de facto networking protocol on the Internet. And it wasn't actually until the late 1980s that we really got the Internet that we have today, and that was through the creation of the NSFNet which would have been in 1986. So the NSF net was created, and that had a faster backbone speed, 56K, and it was really kind of an evolutionary process 
where all of the networks were folded in together and we created one large internet. And that was really kind of the late 1980s, early 1990s when that happened. But by that point, TCP IP had become the de facto standard on the internet. And it's really the use of the site-to-site communication and the end-to-end communication requirements that really drove the adoption worldwide of TCP IP. And that's why we predominantly use TCP IP on our desktops today, rather than, for example, the Novell IPX SPX suite. So that's just a brief history of TCP IP.